Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our continuous revision. So uh, I sent you a link uh, earlier on, but for the past one and a half hours, I've been trying to use the work run. It appears the I think the that particular uh, website or server is down. So I have to set up a new link from a basic account for you. So let us manage with this. As usual, when it's about 30, 40 minutes, it will log us off. And then uh, if you want to continue, then we log back in. So tonight we want to do uh, land law and just share some few thoughts uh, with you. Some of the things that you may want to pay uh, attention to as you are preparing. I remember uh, giving you a question to try your hands on on one of the platforms. And so what I'm going to do is to uh, discuss that with you. And also there are some other questions. Uh, last year, I uh, worked through with some of your colleagues who did last year. And we will go through some of those questions uh, again, particularly as they relate to uh, Act 1036, the New Land Act. So since uh, Act 1036 was passed, we have not had any question uh, in the entrance examination as far as land law is concerned. And for that matter, uh, it will not be out of place for students preparing to write the entrance examination to, for example, expect, I'm not saying there'll be anything like that, to also pay attention to uh, land law uh, because for quite some time, we haven't had any uh, question on it. So pay attention to land law. And on that note, I would like to suggest that as you pay attention to land law as part of your preparation, uh, I would like you to be interested in, uh, if you like, the, 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 the impacts or let me say like the changes or modifications. With uh, which the new uh, Land Act, for example. Uh, please uh, learn to mute yourself, okay? Thank you. Uh, which the new Land Act, for example, has made to uh, other areas of land law, which we, we knew uh, before that. Yeah, so uh, as we learn, whatever topic that you are learning, uh, let's also be interested in yes, uh, this has been the position of the law. Has that position of the law, for example, uh, be modified in any way when they're coming into force of the Land Act uh, 2020 Act 1036? And then you, 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 you take note of that as well. Good. So for example, like I just asked you this question, assuming your land law lecturer wanted to be maybe very, uh, generous and ask you to identify and discuss, for example, five areas or whatever uh, areas in Ghanaian land law, uh, which have been modified uh, by the new legislation. You should be able to confidently do that. And that is why I was suggesting that as you learn your land law, uh, it is also pertinent to be in a position to know, uh, know the pre state of the, I mean, pre uh, 1036 state of the law, and then the post 1036 uh, state of the law, as it were. Okay, so those are just the initial remarks. Then, if you also remember, uh, I think I put a question like this. Uh, on one of your platforms some time ago, about two weeks or a week, that you are doing internship in a law fair, your supervisor would like you to submit a memo. 
explaining the state of the law concerning registration of instruments affecting land in Ghana. Good. So this is, of course, a straightforward uh, essay question. And as we explore in the, the as in the questions that we discuss, are trying to solve the was it the contract as a law of contract question uh, in relation to illegality. It was also a memo. So this is a, a memo. So like uh, the same uh, approach. But as I said, the most important aspect of the question is not so much about the format, but the substance, right? The substance, the substance and also like the structure. How do you structure your ideas? So um, this question is just a, an attempt for you to uh, demonstrate your, you know, it's an invitation for you to demonstrate uh, your knowledge of uh, land law insofar as relates to registration of instruments under uh, the old and now the repeal bill at 122, and now uh, the new law uh, at 10 exists. So, uh, a good answer, will, for example, uh, of course, I said you need to. Uh, put your ideas down and then it's a word structure. But a good answer would definitely uh, have an introduction. And then the introduction, uh, a good answer among other things will attempt to make the point that uh, instruments uh, affecting land in Ghana, of course, you attempt to explain or define it. Uh, refers to any uh, document uh, which contains information regarding ownership or title or any information relevant to ownership or title of a land. And then you make the point that uh, an instrument affecting uh, an interest in land is not in itself uh, ownership. Instrument affecting uh, land or interest in land in itself is not ownership of land. It's just uh, a means of proving title or proving uh, ownership to uh, an interest in land uh, as it were. And then we make the point that uh, the law uh, before, uh, I mean, the law has been that an instrument uh, needs to be registered before it will be given the recognition that uh, it deserves by uh, you know, the law. But then you must be quick to say that uh, a registered instrument is not the state guarantee of ownership. That is very important. And then you make uh, the point that uh, this is an area of the law uh, which has generated some controversy prior to the enactment of Act 1036. And for that matter, you are going to uh, you know, explore basically what the law was. What was the law uh, briefly before Act 1036? And what were some of the, 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 the problems or the challenges? associated uh, with, the, with the state of the law uh, before uh, 10, uh, the Act 1036 was passed, as it were. Now, when you are done with that, we are just giving like the outline, and then after that, we can just uh, uh, speak to some of the issues. So when you are done with that part, then the other part of the question says that the state of the law, so meaning that the main focus is now the present state of the law, the current state of the law. And of course, you cannot do justice to such a question if you are, for example, uh, not abreast with Act 1036. Uh, so if you have a look at the Act 1036, all the things that you'll be talking about will be essentially uh, what you knew under Act 122. 
and also probably you may make a mistake and even go to the area of PNDs Law 152 regarding land title registration, but that has got nothing to do uh, with this question. Because as you remember, land title registration scheme under PNDs Law 152 uh, sought to create a land title register, which would enable the various interests in, in, in land recognized by the law to be registered in such a register. And so there you notice that the focus was to register the interests, right? The, the various uh, quantum of ownership interests and so on in, the, in that particular uh, register. And it was not just merely to register documents relating to an interest in land. So that is why I'm saying that uh, in a question like this, you don't have to uh, go on that tangent here. The focus is quite narrow. We're talking about instruments affecting land or interest in land, a document uh, having something to say about an interest or ownership a person has in land. Uh, and we are supposed to uh, discuss the present state of the law in relation to that. That is just what the question is asking us to do. And you don't have to uh, confuse yourself by going to add a uh, land title, uh, you know, uh, registry or registration to it. So let us uh, pay attention uh, to that. And again, let me say that, uh, as I said, the second part of the question, the, the current state of the law, if you haven't looked at Act 1036, you know, particularly if you look, haven't looked at the chapter five, Good morning. You, have, you haven't looked at the chapter five of, uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 sorry, uh, chapter five, that is um, the title registration. And now if you look at the chapter six, uh, deed regis uh, registration, uh, that is, uh, the, the deeds registration is what is equivalent to uh, at 122. So don't let us forget that because the at 122 land uh, registry, uh, you know, act, as you remember, sought to uh, provide a registration arrangement for documents relating to land and not uh, necessarily the, the ownership or the interest in the various uh, land as it were. So when you, so, so the second part will be, if you like, uh, more or less uh, exposition, just explaining the, the, the current uh, regime uh, as it were. And for that matter, as I said, it's useful for you to know um, uh, what do you call the this uh, registration under chapter six of Act 1036, starting from session 206 to session 232. And it is that uh, which is uh, uh, you know, similar to uh, what used to be the case under at 122. But if you go to the chapter five that I mentioned, the title registration, uh, that is uh, uh, you know, a reenactment of uh, PNDC law 152. That is a land uh, title registry. So that speaks to registration of the ownership or the, you know, the various uh, interests in the land. So that is a chapter five of Act 1036. But if we are talking about uh, the system which we used to have under Act 152, the, the most relevant provisions, uh, uh, what do you call the, uh, Chapter six, no chapter six, uh, of course. And then uh, if you look at the instruments and agents under section 163 uh, coming, they are also a relevant uh, provision. Now, when you have finished with the exposition, then you come to do, uh, you know, a bit of evaluation, like a bit of a, like a you know, discussion. In other words, uh, how superior or how advantageous 
is the present state of the law in relation to registration of instrument affecting uh, uh, land better than the, the old regime. That is the regime before uh, the enactment of Land Act 2020 at 1036. And once you, you, you finish doing like the you know, that kind of comparison and bringing out uh, how the present uh, law that is at 1036, as for example, address some of the problems that uh, we used to have with the operation of Act 122, you have done uh, justice to uh, uh, the question. So uh, just to remind uh, ourselves, in talking about uh, registration of instrument affecting land, we have to uh, remember uh, what uh, the case was and then the kind of instruments. You no, know, I've, I've explained already that uh, we understand instruments to be uh, documents, right? Documents uh, having information concerning an interest in land and so on. But, and the most important legislation before we had act, we had the current Act 1036, the New Land Act, uh, as you remember, was uh, Act 122, the land uh, registry, uh, that was like, if you like, the most uh, uh, direct or the most relevant uh, uh, legislation as far as registration of uh, instruments affecting uh, land was concerned. And again, we also have to remember uh, the type of uh, instruments which were registrable and the ones which were not uh, registrable. So that is uh, also uh, important because if you look at the uh, <clears throat> Act 122, uh, you notice that uh, if you have something like the uh, a judge's certificate, okay, if you have something like a, a judge's certificate, you don't have to register it in the land uh, registry before it will have what it will have a, a legal effect or it will have like the uh, the force of law uh, as uh, it were. And again, if you look at the the same uh, 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 legislation that is section twenty four uh, thereof, uh, a will, a will to uh, did not have to be registered under uh, the Land uh, Registry uh, Act, the, uh, you know, Act 122, before it will have uh, recognition uh, by uh, law and so on uh, and so forth. But Section 24 of Act 122 was quite emphatic that where an instrument affecting uh, you know, land was not registered in accordance with the prescribed procedure under Act 122. Uh, such an instrument, according to Section 24 of the repealed Act 122, uh, was to be of no effect, was to be of no uh, effect until it is registered. So being of no effect uh, also brought about controversy, uh, as you remember. You look at the, uh, the old cases of uh, uh, Osha and Daco. You remember those uh, cases uh, where the court went to the extent of uh, making the point that uh, even uh, where the document has be duly be signed by the parties and all that, and then uh, it is not registered yet. Uh, what happened was that it did not confer, if you like, uh, a legal title, but it conferred equitable title on the purchaser. And according to the Court of Appeal uh, in Osha and Daco, uh, that satisfied the requirement of the status of fraud. But of course, this was just one twisted 
uh, interpretation of non-registration of instrument and uh, at one two two, but as you remember your land law, uh, how uh, you know in the the, the well-known case of uh, Asare and uh, Ruby, uh how they disagreed uh, with such uh, a position that. Uh, <coughs> I mean, like Asari and the uh, uh, sorry, in the uh, also uh, came to make the point that if you have uh, an unregistered uh, instrument, it can be validated by registration. That to say that uh, is not a void, but that is uh, problematic. That is problematic, and as uh, the, the the problem which practically uh, used to be encountered was this, that A and B, let's say that A got uh, a lease, let's say like a, a lease, you know, or any type of conveyance in relation to Black Acre. And then uh, B also, you know, because of this problem of multiple sale, the same Black Acre, the same land was also sold to B, and also got some form of a conveyance other lease or whatever. Now let's suppose that uh, A took his document to the Lands Commission for registration, but uh, they didn't process it timelessly. And B also got his uh, in instrument relating to the same land, to Lands Commission. And he, by whatever means, he succeeded in getting them to register uh, his document ahead of A, despite the fact that A had submitted his uh, earlier in time. So, in respect of the same land, uh, A had his grants before B, and whatever instrument, whatever convenience which was given to him, he also submitted it to the Lands Commission, but the, his was not, for example, uh, registered uh, uh, earlier in time. And the subsequent one was registered uh, ahead of him. Now, if you are going by the strict, uh, you know, wedding of section twenty-four of uh, at one two to us, it were uh, the obvious legal effect will be that it is a, the, the registered instrument. So the second person to get his you no know, instrument, his document registered, in terms of. Uh, trying to determine priority. If, for example, you don't have any means of uh, determining the ownership of that particular land, and the only things we have available are the two competing documents. Okay, uh, two competing documents in respect of the same land. One is registered, the other is not registered. So, and the law says that if it is not registered, it is of no effect. So therefore, uh, the second person to get his document registered is going to uh, be given a priority, in, I mean, priority of his document in, you know, in terms of proving ownership uh, of the land, as it were. And this obviously uh, is unfair, because just imagine, if you take your documents to a government department or for processing, you don't really have control over when it will be uh, processed. So why should you uh, suffer? Now, you notice how this particular simple point in many you know, cases gave rise to uh, shifting interpretation by the, the, by, by, by the court. Remember uh, the case of uh, Interm and Aquanda, the well-known case of like uh, Interm and uh, Aquanda, uh, which made the point that if a party presented an instrument and it was refused registration in circumstances in which it could compel the registrar to register it, but was wrongly rejected, it must be regarded as registered. <laughs> so in terms of Aquanda also just brought another twist that, yes, if you've taken your document to the Lands Commission for registration, and let's suppose that they refuse to register it, or they fail to register it, and if you look at the circumstances in which the registrar 
refuse uh, to register it or fail to register it, if it was uh, such that uh, the person who presented the document could have you know, legally compel the registrar to register that document despite its refusal, then the mere fact that it was not registered in fact will not automatically let the, 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 the section 24 render the document what, uh, void. And in terminal Aconda suggested that uh, you could consider it as having been registered. So there was this doctrine of what they called constructive registration. The doctrine of constructive registration, of course, uh, that was trying to read in uh, meaning which was not obvious to the textual provision in session uh, 24 of the repeal act uh, 122 uh, as uh, it were. And you all know the case of a mechanical Lloyd assembly plant against uh, uh, Nati, uh, where a document recited that the grant of line to the plaintiff was made with the consent and concurrence of the requisite elders, but it was in fact executed by the chief acting alone. So if you read the document, you say that yes, all the parties, the chiefs and the other uh, elders whose consent and concurrence are requisite for valid alienation have so uh, executed. But if you look at the, 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 the truth, the truth of the matter was that it was only the chief who executed the document in Mechanical uh, Lloyd Assembly against uh, Nighty. Now, later, the Paramount Sioux granted the same piece of land to the defendants. And who, on hearing that the sub actually owned the land, obtained another grant of the same land from the sub-chief and his elders. Now, both the plaintiff and the defendant registered their instruments with the same land, uh, different instrument. So they got them uh, registered and the plaintiff was first to register it. So question arose as to which of these competing instruments in relation to the same piece of land should be given priority. In other words, should be considered as being first uh, in time. I'm told that we are going to have our session end in 10 minutes. Uh, and then when it so ends, we will use the same uh, link uh, to come back. So if you want to come back, you can come back and then we do probably a few more minutes before we end. Because I'm using like the basic account, my, our regular account, the website is down. Yeah, so uh, coming back to uh, mechanical uh, law, when the court, uh, sought to determine uh, priority. Uh, the court did not uh, limit uh, itself to only uh, registration, but the court also looked at the validity of the grant. In other words, uh, they do acquire the land from a, a lawful uh, source. They do get it from a person who has the competence to give the land to you. But mind you, in one case, uh, it is just only uh, the chief who granted it without the consent and concurrence of others whose cons consent and concurrence are requisite for valid uh, grant and all that. So uh, the courts uh, held that the document granting the land to the plaintiff was invalid as it was signed by the chief alone. So here, it did not matter that the the the, the that document had been signed and registered. But since the court knew that the position of valid alienation in that community or regarding that suit was the chief and some other principal elders, so far as the chief, I mean, the, the principal elders did not actually sign, the court uh, felt that the grant was not valid. So it was not just a question of the plaintiff having, for example, registered their document or their instrument earlier in time than the other party. 
Yeah, so that is the uh, mechanical Lloyd uh, plant against uh, uh, Nati and so on. So I am saying all this uh, just to uh, let you know some of the operational challenges uh, which were associated with uh, the land uh, uh, title, I mean, not the land title, that is the Land uh, Registry uh, Act, uh, Act 122, uh, as it were. I mean, not uh, only that, there were certainly uh, some other deficiencies uh, as far as the Land Registry uh, Act uh, uh, was concerned. For example, uh, if you look at uh, the Land uh, Registry Act, uh, particularly Section 11, Section 11 required the registrar to register all instruments which have been submitted to it in the regular form. And the registrar did not have power to refuse to register uh, a deed except uh, where maybe uh, someone has objection because there have been some uh, erasures or some interlineations or mutilations of a document which has been presented in order. Otherwise, the register had very limited uh, power because you could not just look at the, the document and say that this is the real owner or that is not doing it, so I'm not going to register. So these were some of the problems that uh, we had with respect to the old law. Now, if you read Act 1036 uh, closely, you will notice that some of the operational challenges uh, which I have uh, mentioned that were associated with the repealed uh, Act 122 uh, have been addressed. For example, uh, when you actually submitted your instrument for registration, it's recognized by the new law. So that the problem we had under the old law that if you submitted your instrument and then it was kept somewhere and so on and so forth, uh, and it was not registered and someone managed to get his instrument there and by whatever means manipulated the system or whatever, and got that instrument registered. Now he was going to be giving priority over you because you only submitted yours and yours has not been what, uh, registered. Now that problem has been addressed. So if you look at, uh, if you look at session 213, right? Session 213 of Act 1036, I'm referring to the Land Act uh, 2020, Act 1036. If you look at session 213, I quote, for example, a complete application which is submitted for registration in respect of a particular parcel of land shall have priority according to the order in which the application is what is presented to the register. So uh, here you notice that uh, where you have submitted instrument for registration, so long as you have done all that is required in terms of get applying for registration of that instrument. Now, priority is going to reckon from that moment when you submitted that application, which is quite regular or which is quite complete on its face, and not when the instrument is actually uh, registered in the, by, the, by, the, by the register of the Lands Commission, uh, as it were. So please uh, pay attention to uh, those uh, provisions uh, as well. So for you to, as I said, understand the state of the law uh, very well, uh, to be able to do this uh, question, I would like you to look at the whole of chapter six, that is starting from section 206, right? Uh, starting from section 206 uh, up to section 232 of Act 1036, uh, that will give you a very good picture of the current state uh, of the law uh, in respect of uh, registration of uh, instrument. And then 
we will be in a position to also uh, compare, right? Compare and uh, contrast with what the position of the uh, law used to be under the uh, old uh, system. Okay, so I noticed that uh, we have uh, two minutes for two minutes, 30 seconds for this session to end. So I'll pause on this. If you have any question or comment before we move, we, we will log in with the same link. Any question or comment on this particular question? Yeah, you can just unmute yourself if you want to talk when you finish. You mute yourself back. Hello. Yes. Kwasi, go ahead. Uh, good, good, good evening, Doug. Good evening, Kwasi. Because, um, no, please, um, so meaning the current position of our 1036 has now brought. Please, area, we have how many 20 seconds to go off. So, area. Okay. So, well, I, I wanted to know if the current position of our 1036 has now. Um, brought um, the ruling in Cayman Aquanda into play, as in that's the new position now. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So, of, of, oh, that, right, right. So, in a sense, in a sense, uh, part of the, the, the wisdom, because in Cayman Aquanda, so to, bro, to bring about the constructive uh, registration, as it were. But now the new provision is saying that if you have done all that is required in terms of submission requirements of the application, then uh, we will reckon the time for purposes of priority of the relevant uh, instrument from when you completed the submission and not when the registration actually took effect. So in that respect, uh, you are right to say that uh, interminable plan uh, has been uh, reenacted in a sense. Okay, so uh, is ending. We will re-log in and continue. Right, see you if you want to come back. 